Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Quick little video here on aircraft grounding while fueling. As uh, most of you know, static electricity builds up on objects as they travel through the air. If you don't believe me, the quickest way to demonstrate this is by taking a balloon that's blown up and just waving it through the air and placing it over somebody's head. And you'll see the static electricity will pick your hair up or pick their hair up. No different for airplanes. Big aluminum object flying through the air. The faster it goes, the more static it builds up. Depending on the airplane, they usually have some sort of devices to disperse that static. Usually builds up in the nose, travels through the airplane and disperses through sharp edges on the leading edges. Some airplanes have static wicks, which help disperse that static electricity. And some don't. But even if it does have some sort of method of dispersing the static electricity, after the airplane lands, there still might be some static built up. So that could present a danger while fueling the aircraft due to very flammable fuel vapors. So what you most commonly see people do at the fuel truck or at the FBO or at the pump is they clip the grounding cable, which all aircraft fueling stations have available, and they clip it right here to the exhaust. And one thing I really don't like about that is, first of all, the exhaust on aircraft, not only is it very important, but it's very expensive. And every time you clip something on there, more often than not, they just yank it off. They don't always carefully disengage the clip. What that does is that puts little scratches onto the exhaust. And those scratches lead to cracks due to a phenomenon called stress risers. I'm not gonna get into the metallurgy about it, but long story short, scratches lead to cracks. Cracks in metal are bad. Cracks in expensive metal are even worse, and you don't wanna damage your exhaust. So what's the solution? So for me, I'd like to find a piece of metal that grounds the airplane and is relatively uh, low risk, low cost, sacrificial, if you will. This isn't a good example, but on a common airplane, like a Cessna 172 that has a tie down ring right here. See, this thing right here is retractable, so it's not the best example. But on an airplane with a fixed tie down ring, I think that's a pretty good place, grounded to that. There's another good place that I like to use, and on my airplane, it's usually on the nose fork. You know, we've got various uh, locations with hardware on them and you can typically clip the ground onto one of those bolts and that'll give you a good ground. A bolt, you know, a few dollars. Not gonna scratch it, it's not gonna crack, it's not gonna be a problem. Usually not a very expensive bolt. A lot of airplanes, they have a tow lug up here. This isn't a good example on, on my nose fork because uh, when I rebuilt it, I got rid of the tow lug and I now tow off the axle. But most airplanes will have a tow lug on the nose fork or on the nose strut. And that's a great place because it doesn't really have any risk of cracking or being damaged. And it's relatively low cost if you need to replace a bolt or a nut or a washer or a spacer. But now I'm really gonna show you the, where the proof is in the pudding, why grounding to the exhaust is typically not a good idea. And somebody brought this up to, to me recently. I thought it was a great point they made. Does this even ground to the airframe? Is that even a valid place to ground the airplane? Who came up with that? I don't know. So what I did was I pulled out my trusty meter, something that anybody can check very, very easily with a, a very low cost uh, multimeter that has any sort of um, continuity feature. So I just go over to the uh, continuity check, which usually has a symbol of like a little speaker or something like that. And when you have continuity in the circuit, it beeps, okay? So again, circuit's open, closed, it beeps. Let's go to a, a known good spot on the airplane that has a good solid ground. And I'm gonna go, I don't know if you can see this. I move myself around here a little bit. Okay, so I've got a bolt right up here in the bottom of the uh, nose fork casting that just goes directly into the airframe. So I got one lead on there and I'm gonna go somewhere else on the airplane. Okay, that's just a screw on my cowl. So I know that's 
that's a good ground right there. So again, back on that same bolt on the nose fork casting. Okay, that bolt's good. That one grounds. That one grounds. That one grounds. Pretty much everything on my nose fork has continuity and grounds out. I can't explain to you exactly the uh, path of electricity, but I can tell you beyond a reasonable doubt that we do have continuity all throughout my nose fork and that it does ground to the airframe. All right, let's check the exhaust. Okay. We're back on those grounds on the nose fork. We know those are good. Let's see what the exhaust does. Nothing. Let's see if we can uh, get the exhaust to ground to itself. Okay. is not very conductive for being a piece of metal. So there it is guys. The exhaust is a horrible place to ground your airplane for fueling for a handful of reasons. It could cost you a lot of money and it's not very effective. Find somewhere else on the airframe. Install a grounding tab if you have to. Use the nose fork. Get a meter. Check it out yourself. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say and what your airplanes are showing because maybe I just have some anomaly here. Uh, I don't know, but you'll never see me grounding any airplane that I fly, own, or operate off the exhaust muffler. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Make sure to uh, check out some of the other videos. We're getting ready for Oshkosh 24 here, so kind of a big push just to get all the last minute stuff done. Um, working on a nose wheel shimmy. I just rebuilt my scissor, talking to McFarlane about a possible shimmy dampener from them. And yes, I said dampener because that's what they call theirs, uh, contrary to what I said in my last video. Anyways, thanks for watching. Click like if you enjoyed this stuff. Subscribe if you haven't already. And please feel free to reach out and leave some comments.